This squeaky old chair. Oh. Come on, you stupid mount. chair. We already got them rolling in here. Hey guys, do I have audio? I have a mic plugged in here. Just want to double check the audio. Do we have audio? Sounds good. We are good to go. Very cool. Do a little roll call here in one second. Give a quick count. Hold on. Fourteen. All right. And just drill over my table. Okay. Do a little roll call here. Frontline cigars. What's up? What's going on, Richie? How you doing, buddy? What's up from Branson? Rub it in, man. Rub it in, dude. What's going on, Doug, Bill, Greg? Dude, Turkey Day was very good. I'm paying for it right now. I ate way too much. How was yours, man? What's going on, Russ? The Dad Bot Angler. What's going on, dude? Frontline Cigars. What's up from Chicago? What's going on, Ed? Sounds good. Greg, John, Doug, Elax05. What's going on, buddy? I do appreciate it, man. You always make comments on my Instagram posts. I really do appreciate that, man. What's going on, Richard? How you doing, buddy? Speech is loud and clear. Thanks, Richie. Loud and clear. Thanks, Mike, Sam. What's going on, Bill? How you doing, buddy? Dad, you're already in here, man. Hey, we never got to make our video. They were looking forward to the video with us. We never got around to doing that. Bassin227, what's going on? Sounds good. How's it going? We've been freezing here in Panhandle of Texas. No kidding. <clears throat> Not doing too bad. We had a few cold days. Starting to warm up a little bit. But I think we did have a low for like 18 the other day. Tom, you would think I would have oiled this chair by now, but no, I have not. I have not done that. Elaxo5, what's going on, dude? Ray? Glad to see you, man. Caden, what's up? What's going on, Sam? First time here, Frontline. Appreciate it, buddy. That's right. Listen to Doug, man. If you guys just joined, hit the thumbs up. That will get the chat rolling. Really do appreciate that. Thank you, Richard. A couple things real fast. I'm sure you guys seen the last video. And we are talking about the shirts, TJ81 shirts. All right. Had 14 people that uh, want a shirt so far. You guys know once we get up to 25, I, I will make the order. Um, it depends how long it's going to take. I may only let this run for maybe another week or so because it's going to be very tight to get those before Christmas. I should have done this sooner rather than later, so it's kind of my fault. If you guys don't care about that, then we can just keep it rolling until we get 25. But like I said, right now we're at 14. So if you want a shirt, let me know. I'm not sure if my wife is on yet, but she'll put all the info in the description before the video is over as far as colors and price and all that. So definitely check that out. But uh, you can email me or you can message me on Instagram or Facebook, or you can reply to the, the um, comment section on Facebook of the post that I made. And we'll just go from there. Basically, just let me know if you want one size and color. I'll count them up. We reach 25. We'll place the order. Frontline dude, yeah, you want one, man? Email me. Sam, I already have you down. Um, I don't have you down. I think I was talking to you on Facebook, though. I'll get you down. It's frontline, you want one. Sam, you want two. Do appreciate it, guys. Like I said, yeah, just make sure you hit me up. Instagram, Facebook, email, and we'll get her done. Andrew, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Tom says, I'm so proud of you. A true fisherman. Oils the reels, but not the chair. That's right, man. I'm too busy oiling the reel, man. 
So who's still fishing out there? You guys catching anything? What is going on? I've not fished in like three weeks. Let's see, Frontline says, I just followed you on Instagram. I'll send you a message. All right, dude, that works. I will get to you after the stream. But some of you guys got to still be catching them. Let me know. Water temps, what you're catching, what you're using. What is going on? John, you're still fishing, dude? Are you catching them, man? And Frontline, I just seen your message there. Like I said, I'll get back to you as soon as uh, we're done here. Tom caught uh, three little ones today. Frontline, it's too cold for you, man. Where did you say you're at, Chicago? It's kind of chilly here today, actually. I think it was only in the 40s. Pickerel, 37 there. Bill caught Cellar Fry with Trey. Spinnerbait bite was on. I seen that on Facebook. That was pretty cool. Both on the same laydown, right? Ray, I know that, dude. Hopefully you're feeling better, man. And the last time I talked to you, you weren't. Maybe you can heal up, though, and get back at it 21. Greg said it's too cold, too. Yeah, I doubt I'll take the boat out anymore. But um, I do plan to head to the ponds at least a few more times before the end of the year. I'd imagine water temps got to be, I'd guess, probably low to mid-40s, if not lower than that, or colder than that. I need to bring a deeper with me out to the farm ponds next time I go. Let's see here. WB Jones, blade baits up here in the northeast, lows 40s for water temp. I tell you what, um, Bass Geek, he just did a video. I think he's up in the mountains. I thought it said he said though his uh, water temps they're always they stay fairly cold, but uh, he was all bundled up. If you've seen him in that, that video, and he was catching them on a popper, which I couldn't believe. And, I, and it was crazy if you watch that video. At the end of the video, I thought he said he was sitting like 120 foot, which for me, I mean, that's just crazy because I mean, you know, I fish like max like six foot deep. And for him to say that he was in 120 foot and they were suspended like 60, 80 foot down. I mean, I just thought that was just like crazy. Hopefully, though, me, him, and Debo get together next year and I can uh, experience that as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm definitely out of my element fishing that clear water. But uh, old Hank, he'll put me on some fish. 51 bill for you guys. Richie said, dropped a YouTube video on Sunday, late fall, winter, wake baits on Table Rock. With a few cast to catch clips, water temp, low 50s, no kidding. Is that what your channel is right there, dude? MO Swim, Swim Bait Slinger. Is that your YouTube channel name? If it is, make sure you guys check him out. They're stocking trout. The kids are, and I am having fun with Yeah, I need, I need to do something different because, like I said, bass fishing is going to be pretty slow around here, I'd imagine, here real soon. Frontline might go out Thursday. I belong to a private fishing club here. 62 acres. That's very cool. If you guys are just tuning in, we got 60 people on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, please do so. Really appreciate that. Starting to get cold here in Indiana and working too much. So no fishing. That sucks, dude. Gonna try this weekend. Cold New Jersey. Andrew, I fished a week ago yesterday. No fish. Not sure if I'll go out again till spring. Yeah, I think the last time I fished was with my boy. We were fishing the uh, the baby bull gill and the bull shad. That was the last video that you guys have seen me fishing. And the last time I've been out fishing. So, I'm ready to get back at it. Right, man? 21, dude. Hope it's your year, bud. Larry Howdy from Bull Shoals Lake in Arkansas. Very cool, dude. Arizona fishing is great. Deeper's cool, man. I've been using different deepers for many years. The newest deeper that I have is this one is the uh, the deeper chirp. But I have not used this one yet. That's the chirp there. I charged it up not too long ago, but I've not used it yet, so. If I take it out to the ponds, get temps, it'll be the first time using it. Slow worms with terminators off the bottom. Slow. There you go, dude. Hula Popper. He was using um, the Rico. I ordered a couple of those as well. Those are like uh, 
you know, like a twenty-two dollar popper. And for years, I've been hearing guys talk about those, and I never pick one up. And, and Hank finally did, so I said, you know what, I'm going to pick a couple up too. So I ordered a couple. I said he ordered them a while back, and once I seen him order them, I ordered them. But yeah, a little Rico, I believe the smaller size, a little quarter ounce, and that's what he was catching them on. Just as pawpaw, no fishing lately, deer hunting, but uh, it's a question in my mom right now. Awaiting test results. Hope all's well, buddy. John thought about getting a deeper, but something about casting 300 bucks out. I bet mad. Oh, when a lure flies off, you get mad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously it floats, so that is good that it floats. But if you are fishing from the bank, you know, no way to get it back. Unless you're in a small pond. That did happen to me before. I did break one off, and it did float back to me, which was good. But I guess you need to play the wind if you are going to cast one from the bank. Mike says, 50-degree water temp, 43. Uh, or 50, 50 degrees, water temp, 43. 110s, TH Custom, 100 SP, 4 fish. There you go, dude. Ain't bad at all, man. H Beretta 4.5. So it's still working here, Texas, of course. Slim jigs year round, but walkers and wakes, surprisingly, still working. That's cool, dude. Age at about 50 55, man. I definitely stopped tossing top order. I like to ask Hank, though, just how uh, cold it was when uh, he was catching them. Yeah, that's the name. More videos to come. I'm really going to start pumping videos out more often. Guys, definitely check him out. Missouri Swim. Swim bait slinger. Check him out, guys, on YouTube. Dude, if I ever get down to Branson, man, if I get down there, we're doing this full time, we'll be making videos, bud. <clears throat> Went fishing last Saturday and caught 25 bass in the same spot. Heck yeah, dude. That is awesome. Fishy around here, South LA, water temps, high 60s, chatterbaits flipping mostly. Very cool. Frontline cigars, bought an Eskimo. This year for ice fishing this year. Looking forward to using it. What is that, dude? Should I know what that is? Outdoors, yes. I've tried the new uh, Stealth. I got a video on that. I don't believe my wife is watching yet. Babe, if you are, uh, link that video down below, please. I mean, I, I would just call it more of a, a finesse version of the jackhammer. But I liked it, though. I feel it's, it's a it's a chatterbait that would do really well, you know, on uh, pressure bodies of water, ponds, you know, things like that. And that's where I was tossing it. No, dude, major I've probably filled maybe eight or ten just messing around with them throughout the year to see what I like. But majority of them are still in boxes behind me. And I actually just put an order in for a bunch more because that's what we'll be doing here for the next two and a half months or so just organize and tackle you'll be getting a lot of videos on that kind of stuff but like i said yeah i just kind of messed around with them um once i first got them seeing what i like now i kind of know what i want to use and i'll just start organizing everything i was hoping to get those you know before fishing even started and when i got them it was kind of like mid-season so i didn't want to stop doing what i was doing and low tackle so i just kind of held off till now to do it all and i just messed around with the box here and there got about 70 people on here if you guys have not hit the thumbs up please do so i really do appreciate that b davis appreciate five bucks buddy you're interested in the giveaway we do have a nice giveaway for you guys tonight which we'll get into that here in a second if you guys donate you are entered in the giveaway joseph kelly yeah, i got the boat back and they just replaced the cranking battery and they're saying the trolling batteries checked out but i am talking to a company right now about a lithium battery, so that hopefully that's the route that I go with trolling batteries. Like I said, they did replace the cranking battery, so things are good to go uh, with the boat. Like I said, brand new trolling motors on, so I shouldn't have any more issues uh, moving forward, hopefully. How many scales? It's funny, I never have a scale on me. I bet I got probably six or eight in this room. I always keep them in the boats. I usually always have one in the boat. But when I leave the house, it's like I never, I just never remember to pack them. And I'm always in and out of tackle bags, just trying different ones out. So I always forget to put what I need in, in bags from time to time. So 
But the new Ego bags that I got, I'm going to get them loaded up too this winter. And I'm never going to unload them. So everything is always in there. And uh, if you guys don't know that, I do have a code over there at Ego now. I believe it's EGO, TJ81. I want to say that's 10% off over there at Ego. And that's for their nets and backpacks. You know, lure retrievers, anything they have over there. Um, like I said, that's always linked down below. I do believe that's the code, EGO, TJ81. And then I do believe it's 10% off. How do you store your tungsten weights in the battle box? Do I have that in here? That's probably that's probably still on the boat. Yeah, I just used the battle box. And it's got those little ammo cans. And that's, that's what I use for my weights. It's got like a little plunger that you put in the ammo can. Just keeps the weights from rattling around and chipping paint and all that off. So. Do have a code for them as well. Like I said, all the discount codes, guys, are in the description. Is it the Plano Edge Flex Series behind you? Um, I don't believe it's those. I do have some Flex boxes. I don't believe it's those ones up there, though. They have the 3700 Flex now and the 3600 Flex. Corey, that's cool, dude. Package should be there tomorrow. Very cool. He was winner of the last giveaway. Frontline Scars, have you had an issue with line snapping within the reel? I had it happen five times this year within the reel. Can't say that I have. I take that back. One time I can remember I was using Tattoo, and it was after a backlash. So that would be kind of my suggestion to you. If you are backlashing and it's breaking on the cast, you know, with on the as you're casting most likely you had a bad backlash and you kinked that line and that's probably what's causing it i would check that out um, or your line guide in your reel like i said could be frying the line as well if it's breaking within the reel but you also could have a bad guide that's fraying the line on the cast and like i said it's just getting weaker and weaker and then it breaks during the cast as well so definitely check all your guides check your line guide on your reel and then like i said uh, if you're having a bad backlash you are weakening the line if you get a bunch of kinks in that line. So that's a few things there to be aware of. But, uh, but yeah. Debo! There he is. Guys, go sub Debo. I'm just talking about you earlier, buddy. How do I get a pegboard wall as sweet as yours? Looking good, brother. What's going on, buddy? Glad to see you on the show, man. Guys, make sure you go check out Debo. I will link him down below in the description as well. Dude, I've seen all the tackle you got too, man. I'm sure all these guys have as well. You probably need a couple rooms full of pegboard, man. What would you recommend for fishing ponds in late fall, early winter? I guess it really depends where you're at, man, on water temps and all that. If it's still you know, mid to upper 50s, I'd be tossing a spinnerbait all day. Probably um, top water still and all that. If it gets below that, I'd go chatterbait, uh, drag a jig, lipless. Jesse, I am in Illinois, bud. That's right, Tom. Debo in the house. Okay, the Eskimo is a two-person pop-up shanty that fits in a bag with straps like a backpack. There. Oh, okay, I got you. That's cool. That works. I need to replace my Texas, Texa fur rod and reel. Texas fur. Should I know what that is? Any suggestions in the mid price range? Oh, Texas rig. I got you. I see it below there. Texas rig. If you're not in too heavy of a cover, dude, um, if you're not around huge fish, I would go medium heavy, fast. Seven footer is probably what I'd go. Seven foot, seven two. Medium, heavy, fast. As far as a reel goes, I mean, I like a really versatile gear ratio. That way I can do many different things with the reel. I say most guys these days like a faster reel, 7-speed, heck, even 8-speed. I'm more in that 6 range. I'm very comfortable with a 6-speed reel. I can speed it up, slow it down. I love the power of a 6-speed reel. Uh, um, that's what I would go with, 7-foot to 7-2, medium, heavy, fast with a 6-speed reel. 
As far as rods go, I don't believe you're going to get a better bang for your buck rod than the Akuma rods. Um, I'd go with like uh, the EVX series. They have a 7.2 medium heavy fast. It's a bit on the softer side. It's actually labeled like a chatterbait rod. So you may want to step it up to a heavy power if you're in a little bit heavier cover or again, you're around bigger fish and things like that. As far as reel goes, you know, I probably recommend a tattoo less ET the most. Those are right around uh, 130, I believe. SLX, SLX XT, again, they're around 100, 130 bucks. I mean, those are solid reels. I do believe the Bass Pro Shops Pro Qualifier, I do believe that's on sale right now for 70 bucks. That's a great reel as well. Um, full retail on that was like 100 bucks. Sometimes you can get it for like 50, but it is on sale right now for 70. Killer reel right there. And you guys can use code over there at Tackle Inc. to get 10% off your purchase. And if they don't have what you're looking for on site, which I've been trying to get on them to put more on their site and update their site, but they're just very busy over there. And the guy that does that doesn't really work over there full time. So he can't get on it as much as I would like him to. But like I said, they have more in the store than what's on the website. So if you don't see what you want there, I'll leave an email down below as well. He can get it in. You guys can use my code and get a discount over there as well. Well, that's what I'd look at, man. How's Crestliner holding up with all the weight on the transit mini issue? No, dude, I check it all the time. I had a lot of viewers and other people tell me that I need an actual transom saver from the motor to the trailer and all that. But actually talking with Crestliner, guys that build that boat, um, there's really no need for it. That transom is super beefed up and it's made to handle that kind of weight. So I do check it all the time, though, just because I'm curious myself. Wells, everything looks solid. No issues at all. D Wizzle, what's up, buddy? Greg, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're entering the giveaway. Let's go over the giveaway real fast. All right, we do have a couple packs of the Rapid Fishing Solutions line guides. Remember, guys, I had a code over there. TJ81, 25% off on the line guides, hook all, line clips, and all that over at Rapid. So you get two packs of those, both sizes. We got two Trash Master jigs, both half ounce. Okay. And then we got five packs of Grande Bass. I was reading all those comments. A lot of you guys were digging the Grande Bass in my last video. So I got five packs here I'm going to give away to you guys. We have the four inch Crush Craw in Trophy Hunter. Then we have one here in Spicy Craw. Then we got some five inch Trophy Sticks. And then we got the Salty Dog Lizard and the 6.5 Airtail Wiggler. So five packs of baits here, about 25 bucks in value. Uh, Trash Master Jigs, probably 35 line guys. About a $45 value here. If you donate whatever, you're entered in the giveaway. If you do donate, stick around to the end of the stream because we will pick a winner, and I'll ship that out to you guys tomorrow. Something else I want to mention, too, I've been trying, trying to go over all the sales in my videos that Carl's has for the holidays. And if you guys do would like to... Get a subscription over there at MTB. It was 20% off. It's now dropped down to 15% off. So if you'd like to get a plan over there, a full subscription, it is 15% off. And then they're also running a contest on Instagram. And you have to uh, tag Carl's Bait and Tackle and then hashtag Fishmas. And however you celebrate Fishmas, whether it be wearing a Fishmas shirt and decorating your tree with lures, whatever it may be, just tag Carl's, hashtag Fishmas, and they're giving away gifts, I believe. I think it's every week. It could be honest, it could even be every day. I don't really remember if it was every day, every week till Christmas. It could be every day. But anyways, make sure you enter that giveaway over there on Instagram. And like I said, too, Carl's is still running the Trash Master Jigs, like 51% off, the Bio Spawn, 10,000 Fish, all the great sales they were running week before, I do believe, are still going on. So now would be the time to get in on those sales. Before they, they shut it down. John, my kids wanted me to do a YouTube channel, but I can't commit to the time to edit. Instead, we went up to Instagram. Um, do more outdoors is our name. My kids, six boy. My kids, six boy, seven girl, love the game. Very cool, dude. Very cool. Guys, go check him out over there on Instagram. Make sure you hit me up, man. Send me a message. 
if I because I most likely I'm going to forget during the stream here, and I'll give you guys a follow over there as well. Brandon, appreciate three bucks, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. I do appreciate that, John. Fat Willie, the beginning fisherman. New Ryan and Reel showed up on Tuesday, snowed on Wednesday. Just my luck. Well, you'll get to use it here sooner or later, man. Scott, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Finally made it to Thursday Night Live. I do appreciate it, buddy. We've got 83 people on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, I uh, really appreciate it if you guys could do that now. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, in my last video, we were talking about the TJD1 shirts. Okay, I'll let it run for a few more days. Um, if I go any longer past that, you guys won't get the shirts before Christmas. If it's not a huge deal, we'll just keep um, taking orders until we get 25 as of right now. I do believe we had 14, and then I think there was three more as soon as I started the stream. So right around 17, 18 probably. So if we get to 25... I will make the order for the shirts. All the info will be down in the description of this video and my last video as well. If you want to go check it out now, it's in the, in the description of that video. But we get 25, we will make the order. Okay, So just message me on Instagram, Facebook, or email. we got about 90 people on here, guys. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up. Really do appreciate that. What's going on, White Whale? Michael, so you, hey brother, I got a lot of new baits in the last two weeks because of this group. I can't wait to swim the baby bull gill and buy us one baits. Thanks, brother. No problem, dude. Appreciate you guys uh, watching the videos and all that. I tell you what, you're going to dig the, uh, the baby bull gill. I just ordered actually two of them yesterday as well. They got that, um, what was it called? They got the bone gill in, and then uh, I think it's called ruby gill. I picked up those two yesterday. I ordered those and a bunch more uh, Trash Master jigs just because they were 51% off. That's cool, dude. Glad you're digging the baits, man. You're definitely going to dig the biospawn. And for right now, two forty-five a pack over there at Carl's. You definitely cannot beat that price. Can I get a shout-out? I'd hate to butcher your name on a shout-out. Um, Aaron Candogon, which I'm sure that is not even right. But there's your shout-out, dude. Do you have any tips on bass fishing? I mean, I got a bunch of videos on it. I imagine I have a couple, a couple tips here and there. I mean, if you go back a lot of my older videos, I do more beginner type stuff from rods and reels, line baits, and all that. I'm going to get a little bit more into that this coming year. But uh, I would say the number one tip I would have for anyone just getting into bass fishing is don't get overwhelmed with everything that's available right now. I mean, you start looking at this wall or you go to Bass Pro or whatever and you see, you know, 500 different hooks and all these baits and all that. It's very easy to get overwhelmed with all the different tackle. I would just say just concentrate on learning how to fish one or two lures, you know, a moving bait like a spinner bait and then maybe a worm, how to work the bottom. You know, once you figure out how to work those two baits and you're catching fish on them that may be moved to something different. But I'd say the number one thing would do not get too overwhelmed with all the different bait choices out there. Stick to a couple colors. You know, if you're fishing soft plastics, you know, green pumpkin, you know, black and blue, those two colors will, will catch fish anywhere. Hard baits, you know, um, a shad pattern. Normally I like a gizzard shad type color. Bluegill, red craw. I mean, those three colors, again, will catch fish anywhere. So just don't, don't get too overwhelmed with all the choices. Pick a few, learn how to fish them, then I'd move on from there. But as far as like videos, as far as tips, how to fish certain things and, and things like that, yeah, there's a lot of videos that I do have on my channel for that. Front lines and the West Burbs. see here uh james i've not tried the six cents rod bud what's going on hank how do you buddy <clears throat> ed appreciate the five bucks buddy into the giveaway I just woke up from my turkey induced coma what did i miss and not too much dude we we're just talking about you earlier though you may, you may want to go back and watch that you know Check up. Appreciate five bucks, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway as well. We'll go over it one more time here. Two packs of rapid fishing line guides. Remember, guys, got a code over there. 
TJ Dewan, 25% off. Two Trash Master jigs. And then we got five packs of Grande Bass. We got two here of the Trophy Hunter. I right, take the back. The Crush Crawl. Color is Trophy Hunter. And Spicy Crawl. And then we got the Salty Dog Lizard. The Airtail Wiggler. And the 5 inch Trophy Stick. If you enter whatever amount, you're entered in that giveaway. Or if you donate whatever amount, you're entered in that giveaway. Why does my wife tell me to stop buying fishing gear every time I come home with something new? Uh, I don't know, man. It's a good question. Hopefully my wife doesn't start telling me that. What's going on, Josh and Hunter's Adventures? All right, conditions here. Weather, 50 degrees. Water clarity, 30 foot. I'm already lost. Bottom cover with hydrilla, pond, what would you throw? Okay, so you're in a smaller body of water, pond. But you can see 30 foot in a pond? How big is this pond? Dude, I don't even know what to tell you to throw, man. I don't fish clear water, and I'm not going to just make something up just to <laughs> seem like I know what I'm talking about because I don't, dude. I don't fish clear water, especially nothing near 30 foot. Of visibility. The most visibility I have on the lakes that I fish, if it's a foot, it's a lot. I would say uh, Bass Geek would be somebody to ask about that. Yeah, I, I would be lost in 30 foot of visibility. Just got a swim bait set up for mid range swim baits and gliders. I'm looking for suggestions on quality, budget friendly line, both braid and fluorocarbon. You know, I wouldn't go too cheap on floor, to be honest. I mean, you're just going to cause more headaches than what it's worth. Um, braid. Oh, man, see here. <clears throat> Cheaper braid. You know, I use that PC Fun braid for backing, but I've never fished with it, so I don't want to recommend that. I mean, I use Sunline FX2 the most. That's pretty pricey. Smackdown's pretty pricey. Um, Power Pro, I'm not really sure cheap how Power Pro is. I mean... Again, I got a code over there at um, over there at uh, Tech Link. You guys can get ten percent off using that code. I know Carl's just carry some braid as well. That's another option for you. But again, I wouldn't go too cheap online because you don't want to have headaches with it. But uh, fluorocarbon, I use Seaguar Invisex the most. I, I've never used Red Label. It's their lower end fluorocarbon. But I know a lot of guys have good luck with it. So I would say that's definitely an option. And I do believe you can get that at Walmart as well. So you may want to look at that one for a budget-friendly fluorocarbon. As far as braid goes, I'd probably look at PowerPro. Again, I don't remember the price of it, but I do believe it's cheaper uh, than the Sunline and probably the, uh, the Seaguar as well. Okay, so you're talking about your conditions you have. Well, Buzzbait, Lizard... Drop shot, flipping, inline spinnerbait work. Um, I'd imagine sometime during the year that stuff would work. But again, man, I don't want to. I don't want to steer it the wrong direction, man. Thirty foot visibility with grass is way out of my comfort zone, dude. B. Davis bought a couple of the spool of oh, the line fluoro. I've been looking at that. I've not tried it yet, but I've been looking at that. Yeah, man, I dig the cigar stuff, for sure. David Lithium, wow, big price tag, but nice weight saving for performance. But then again, why worry about it on horsepower restrictions that you have? Yeah, I, I'm not really concerned at all about the weight, but um, just a battery that really ain't going to die on me that fast. If these batteries that I'm using now, since they're saying nothing's wrong with them, I mean, I didn't have any issues really all, all summertime with them, but for whatever reason now, they're giving me issues only having, you know, only getting four hours out of them where I know a lithium, I'm going to get much more, um, runtime than that. So that's really the main reason I'm going with the lithiums. Again, not so much, uh, the weight, I mean, it'll be nice to save weight. I mean, I do plan on getting another boat as well. And for that, I want lithiums as well. And we'll get into more of that in another video, why that would be, but yeah, for the crest liner here, yeah, it's not so much the weight, just the runtime. H Barrett, I appreciate 10 bucks, buddy. You're entering the giveaway. APFA, hello. Steve, where are you at? You talking to me, dude? My name is not Steve. 
We got 82 people still on here. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, please do so. Frontline, I use a Brownie Medallion GT only five years old, so I don't know why it would have an issue with anything, including line snapping. Um, five years old, dude. I'd still check that line guide um, where the uh, line's coming out, you know, on your reel. I'd still check that. Still check your guides on the rod. And uh, you, if you just use a regular Q-tip, if you have a crack in a guide, the cotton from the Q-tip will stick in that crack, and that'll let you know that you have a crack there. But if it ain't either one of those, I'd say it's probably from a backlash, man. Joseph Keller, appreciate, appreciate three bucks, buddy. Entered in the giveaway. What's going on, Gabe? I do, man. Fish today in the in the sleet, and now having a bowl of hot soup and watching. I don't blame you, dude. We need to get together, man, next year, dude. I like to try out some of these lakes that you've been fishing. Hey, Victor, hey, Jim, just got on. Hope all is well, buddy. It is, man. Appreciate you getting on, and hanging out with us. K for Cat Doors and Prospect. Appreciate 10 bucks, buddy, in the giveaway. Uh, hello, fellow junkies. Hope all is groovy with y'all this evening. Heavy hook sets. Wishes to all this holiday season. Appreciate it, buddy. Do appreciate that, man. Can you show me your office? I once surround. I once surround your background. Uh, we'll do a tour another time. I don't want to mess with it now. The room's kind of a disaster, to be honest with you. What do you think of the new Daiwa cage? Uh, I haven't seen that one yet. Do you play? No, I don't play Magic the Gathering. I don't. And that game is that game still around? I remember guys playing that game like 30 years ago. What real surprised you this year? Oh, dude, without a doubt, the Elite. That Elite, man. If you guys are looking for a casting, I mean, a reel that will just bomb out a lure. The Elite it definitely has surprised me the most this year. I think, to be honest, I think the Elite surprised me more than the Stize. Like, I think I'd rather have two Elites over a Stize. That's how much I like that reel. Greg, looking forward to your upcoming reel reviews. Don't see many spinning reviews, plus heard tons of good things on the Titanium. For sure, dude. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll do a few spinning and then uh, mainly, like I said, uh, baitcasters. But yeah, I'll probably do the Stize. I used that one enough, like I said in the last video. And the Elite, for sure. I'll do reviews on both of those here real soon. Michael, let's try Trash Master Jig. was such a great deal. I picked up two of them. Dude, I picked up like 30 of them yesterday. Hope my wife ain't watching. But you know what's crazy? I've been checking the three-quarter ounce for like the longest time. Black and blue, since they came out, I don't think black and blue has ever been in stock. Three-quarter ounce. So once it finally got in stock, I seen it yesterday. I ordered that one. I ordered a bunch of other ones, a three-quarter, and then I just stocking up on the three-eighths and the half that I was low on. But uh, I don't know why the, the half, or that three-quarter black and blue has been out for like a year. I've gone fishing six times now and can't catch anything. Well, that ain't good, dude. Try a uh, try stick bait, man. Wacky rig or a Senko. Fishing with Dooley. There's your shout out, man. I'm just going to jump in and catch you with my hands. I don't know how that'll go. K4K Outdoors and Prospecting. Figure out the bait that you have the most confidence in. Focus on those and then try new stuff as the opportunity to do so, don't go all deer in the headlights. Yeah, that's a great point, dude. Capitals fan, what's up, TJ? What big worms do you like to use? Uh, what do I use? Power bait. I use that one probably the most. Um, power bait 10 inch worm. Uh, the new, got it right here. Axle ribbon's a good one. Uh, Rage Tail, Anaconda, Old Monster. Um, look around the right side. That's probably the main four that I use for sure. What's your favorite donut? Oh, it's got to be Chocolate Long John. 
Okay, what do you think is more versatile line? 30 pound braid or 15 pound floral? Also, do you have any recommendation on a good line brand? As far as line brand, I mean, I've been using Seaguar for, gosh, 12, 15 years. I mean, I love Seaguar line. <clears throat> as far as um, what's more versatile, 30 pound braid or 15 pound fluorocarbon? You know, that really depends. I'm not a fan of using braid around wood. I feel it's more headaches than what it's worth. So if you fish a lot of, around a lot of wood, I personally wouldn't use braid. Okay, I like braid um, around grass, top of water frogs, things like that, swim jigs, but I do not like braid at all around wood. If I'm pitching a lot of grass, again, I love the braid, but not around wood. Uh, fluorocarbon, the downside would be, I mean, if you're looking for a line to do everything, the downside with fluorocarbon would be it's a sinking line. So for like poppers, walk the dog baits, you're only going to get a few pops out of them before that line starts to sink and drag the nose down. Now you can still use fluorocarbon with like whopper ploppers, buzz baits, you know, basically you're moving fast enough. I even use it with rage shows from time to time. But any top water that's sitting still, eventually that line will sink and drag the nose down. So, I mean, braid is going to be the most versatile because uh, for the most part, most braids are floating. But uh, again, I just don't like braid around wood. So for me, the way I like to fish the most, I'd get the most use out of 15 pound fluorocarbon. And 15 pounds is really what I use the most anyways. But if you're looking for the most versatile line out of the two, you can pretty much do everything with the braid where you can't do top water um, for the most part with uh, with fluorocarbon. You can't do like the ones that sit still, like sort of like poppers and walk the dog type baits. So hopefully that answered your question. Richard, appreciate, appreciate two bucks, buddy, you in the giveaway. We've got 100 people on here. 86 thumbs up. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, please do so. Grande Fishing, TJ81. You know what I was going to do? Like You guys know they sent me some of these baits. So um, I may reach out to them because you guys look in the comments. A lot of you guys um, were digging the baits and wanted to order the baits. So I may reach out to them to see if they'll give me a code for you guys um, just to you know get a discount. Again, just like a lot of my codes, I won't make anything on it. But just for having the baits on the channel and show them to you guys and you guys digging them and all that. I might be able to get you guys a code to save some money. So if you are going to order some, maybe hold off a little bit. I'll see if I can get you guys a discount code, and we'll go from there. Bobby G, been killing them 47 temp, 3.8 paddle tail with the underspin, slow rolling on the bottom. There you go, dude. Clear water, go with bright colors and a bit of flash. Can't go wrong. Don't go overboard on the flash, though. Small blade if you throw a spinner and you're good. Great tips, buddy. <clears throat> My new Akuma TCS rods will be here tomorrow. Would you recommend down to 250 reels to pair with them? Mm, which which reel or which rod, buddy? The 150, I mean, it's it's a bigger reel. I mean, those rods are so light, you know. Uh, hmm. I have mine on an EVX, which is it's a bit heavier rod compared to the TCS. I personally would want a lighter reel or a smaller, more compact reel on those rods. But, I mean, it's really it's all personal preference. I mean, if that doesn't matter to you, if a lot of your reels are big, if you have a bigger hand, or, again, if it doesn't matter to you, then, yeah, that's a great reel to put on there. But for the most part, um, majority of the baits that I toss on the TCS reels – or most majority of the baits that I toss on the TCS rods, the majority of those are uh, moving baits. Those rods have a much softer action compared to like the EVX series or even just a faster action. They're, most of those are slower action rods. So I like a smaller reel on there that I can get a nice grip on, just again, just because I'm, I'm using reaction type baits and I want a better grip on the rod and reel. Um, that's kind of my thought on that. But again, if you're comfortable with a 150, then yeah, good deal. Indiana Mooseman, what's going on, bud? Big Reb Wild Hog Fish. What's up, dude? Late to the show. What's new? What's going on, buddy? Glad to have you on the show, man. <clears throat> the Dad Bot Angler. It's in an absolute crazy year. What was your favorite bait you picked up in 2020? Favorite bait in 2020. Huh. Favorite bait in 2020. Think about that. I'm going to say, you guys don't want to like reaction type baits. I love spinner baits. 
I'm going to say probably one of my favorites would have to be the triple. You know what's funny? If you watch that video, I was calling it the triple shady. I don't know. I guess I had to say that Eminem on my brain or whatever. I don't know. But it's called triple shady, which would make more sense. I mean, the blades imitate a shad. I don't know why I was calling it shady. But I would say yeah, that spinnerbait from Accent, the triple shady, would be uh, one of my favorite baits I picked up from 2020. Bass on 227, when it gets warmer, you should come here to Central Illinois and got a great pond for you to fish. Would suggest getting on the lake, but no boat yet. For sure, dude. Hit me up, man, when it gets warmer, bud. I've asked this a lot of people. What would you get first, side scan or live scope? You know, I've never used live scope, so... Um, uh, how, I don't know. I've, I've never really used it, so I do just be more of a, just my, my thought on it right now. Um, I mean, live scope, I mean, it means instant. I mean, I would say I'd probably go with live scope. I mean, it's obviously it's more expensive than side scan, but again, never even using it. I don't know for sure, but just off the top of my head, I'd probably go with the live scope. Don't, isn't, um, hummingbird coming out with that now too? Fishing with Alex. What's going on, dude? Glad to have you, man. Have you fished East Fork Lake? I have not, buddy. Have not. I don't fish many different lakes, man. I mainly fish three different lakes. And that's it. Most of you guys recognize those lakes. And uh, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm mad about that, but a lot of guys will put where I'm at in the comments. And I don't want those lakes getting slammed with people, so i got to constantly erase comments that people know where I'm at. So... But yeah, I don't fish many different lakes. I try and just stick to the same three lakes. Just because I don't have a whole lot of time to travel. The other lakes I'd like to go to, um, they're not too far from me. But they'd be probably uh, about a four-hour round trip. Majority of the nice lakes that I want to fish are about two hours away. But for the most part, uh, one lake I fish is about 18 minutes from my house. The other one's about 45 minutes. And then the other one's about 50, 55 minutes. So it's not too far a drive. I have the new Britannium. I, I did uh, show the box, at least, in the last video. But I have not used it yet, so I really can't give you my opinion on that one right now. Daiwa or Shimano. Man, I love the DC reels, for sure. Um, that's a tough one. I probably go with... I'm probably going to go with Daiwa, though. I mean, I love the Shimano reels. Definitely love the DCs. But um, I probably like the Daiwa braking system a bit better. But like you can really tune those, you can really um, yeah, tune those in much better versus the uh, the Shimano. I mean, I'm sure the Shimano guys are going to say the opposite, but I mean, I just personally like the brake system better, and I, I can fine tune it better than uh, what I can with the Shimanos. When all fails, break out the crankbait and match the depth with the depth the fish are suspending at. If you're bank fishing, throw minnows with a bobber. There you go. Yep, 25 Christmas starts here pretty soon. I don't use uh, spider wire, buddy. I don't have any thoughts on that one. Any of you guys use spider wire? Uh, glide baits, the only one that I even have, dude, is the um, S-Waver 168s. And I just throw them now on the, um, it's a frog swim bait rod. It's a 7.3 heavy. It's got a fast tip to it. I'd rather have a slower tip. But that's just the rod that I'm using for those right now. Probably not the ideal rod for it. That's just the one that I have that can handle the weight. But, uh, yeah, that's really the only glide bait that I'm tossing. What are your top spinner baits? Man, that's a tough one. I really wanted to like that that new Mega Bass one. I think I think it's called the SV3. I'm just, I don't know, man. It's, it's Of course, it's got nice detail to it and all that. But, man, it just does not have the thump that I thought it would have. Um, frame's much th smaller than I thought it would ha would be as well. But just, I don't know, it's not catching many fish on it. I still think one of the best spinner baits that I've used is the Picasso. And reason being is 
the uh, the wire that they use. I mean, I think that's the most vibration I've ever had out of a double willow. You guys know I fish pretty stained and muddy water. Most guys would suggest a, a Colorado blades. I just never really do that great with Colorado blades. I mean, there's a ton of shad in our lakes. A willow blade, I feel, just matches the hatch the best as far as profile, the vibration that the shad give off. You know, I just really like a willow blade. And like I said, with that wire they use, the Invis wire, and I like the .028. Now, it's a it's a real, like, fine wire. Now, there are, they will break on you from time to time, no doubt, just because, again, it's a, it's a small wire. But uh, that's the most vibration that I've ever had out of a double willow, for sure. But again, that's a .028. I do believe they have them in a .0. Um, three, five as well, which again, you don't get near the vibration out of that one. It's a bigger wire. I just like that 0 0.028. So double willow from a castle. I'm still going to make that number one. Um, the mega strikes. Those are pretty good. I like the mega strikes. Uh, just your standard booyah spinner bait. Still one of my favorites. The, the Viber flex for them is really good as well. The accent triple shady. I do like, um, what else do I use? Oh, the Z-Man one, that was pretty good. Terminators, I like those. I think you only asked for my top three, but you guys know I love spinnerbaits. Yeah, Tatsu is pretty expensive. And like I said, I, I've never had um, a Seaguar line break after a backlash, um, but except Tatsu. It's the only time that I've ever had any of them break before. And um, like I said, that's really the only time that I even used that line. I used it that season, and then I just didn't buy it anymore. I didn't know if that's going to be like a characteristic of that line, if it's going to happen every time you have a backlash. So, again, I didn't want to put any more money out on it. Um, very sensitive line, good line. But I didn't like that it happened. And it could have been a fluke thing. It may never even happen again. I mean, I know a lot of guys love the Tatsu. But I've had just such great luck with Invisex. That's mainly what I use. If I'm strictly going to use a combo to work the bottom, I'll go to a Brazex. But for the most part... I like the Invisex. It's got a lot of stretch to it, but um, it's, a, it's a really good fluorocarbon line. It's nice and soft, especially if you condition it. You really don't have too many issues with, with backlashes and all that in memory. Uh, let's see here. Alan, hello, TJ. Be subscriber here. Enjoying your videos. Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate you tuning in, man. John, hi from Texas. What's going on, Trey? Guys, if you've not checked out Trey, check him out, dude. TH Customs. We'll link him down below. No, I'm not Steve. I'm TJ, man. Tackle Junkie. The Evergreen Gizmo. I don't think I play with that one, dude. I got some of the Evergreen Square Bills and Top Waters. Um, the, um, what's it even called? The Shower Blows. I've never messed around with the Gizmo. Ben's been killing it. Steelhead on Brock Creek, Ontario, just with a bobber, row rags. Have you heard anything about Steelhead? No, I have not, dude. That's the first for me, man. Hey, Jim. Hook sets are free. Hey, Jim. I know you're big into square bills. Do you have a preference between KD 1.5 and the Luckcraft 1.5? Um, I think the Lucky Crafts, I know they have a one knocker. Um, I like those. And uh, as far as KVDs too, I, I like that. I like that rattle. I thought the original ones are more of like BBs. Do I even have any of those with me anymore? I got some of those somewhere up here. Hold on. I'd be in this box here. I was trying to think what series. Maybe it was the Rick Lund series. I think those were. No, oh, these ones ain't. See these? I don't care for that rattle. That's a lucky craft. This is the Rick Glenn series, but I know they have. This could be it here. There we go. That's a lucky craft there. That's got the one knocker to it. So I just like that rattle. And to be honest, the KVD, that color, the Gizzard Chat, man, that's just a go-to color for me. So that comes into play as well. But yeah, some of the, some of the lucky crafts that have that, that rattle like that. Yeah, I don't care for that at all. That just that one knocker type rattle is what really works for me. So again, I picked up some of those that do have that. 
So mainly the one knocker type rattle and the color selection is kind of what leans me towards one bay, you know, from one to another. There's another good one here, and this one here is silent. But that Spro 60 there, that's an awesome scribble right there. What else we got in here? Mega Bass. They don't even make these anymore. Remember those coppers? We all got in here. Jack All with the Aska. They don't make those anymore either. That's a killer one right there, man. Urashi rattling. They don't make those anymore. Imas. One day we're going to go do a video. I'll do these different square bills. Spro 50s. All right. Where are we at? Lures to Lions. Appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're in the giveaway. That ZT video helped me fall in love with mine. Dude, that's an awesome reel, man. It really is. That's one thing I will say about the 13 reels, and they're very, very comfortable in hand. But that Z2, dude, it will bomb out a lure, man. No, I've never fished in Colorado. John, I've been here the whole video just hanging out and listening to all your chats. Love all the diversity. Can't wait for the collab with Debo and Geek. You guys will be great together. Appreciate it, John. I do appreciate that, man. Hopefully in 21 we can make that happen, dude. What are your real-time expectations to get down to Branton? I tell you what, man, the way my numbers were in the summertime, I was telling my wife, you know, we're there. I mean, she was looking at homes down there. We were looking at property. I mean, it was getting serious. I thought for sure we were getting there. And what I really need is my numbers to stay consistent to what they were in summer. And, of course, now we're down here in wintertime, dang near, and my numbers are a quarter of what they were in summer. So, once I can get my numbers to be consistently, you know, what they were last summer, then it'd be time to move, you know. So, it is, this one I think I'm going to be there, <laughs> then it drops back down. So, I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna give it my all next year for sure. I'm going to pump out as many videos as I can and, and just go from there. But, um, I don't know. I would say, realistically, if it doesn't happen in the next couple of years, it probably ain't going to happen. So, so, does that play by ear, dude? I'm in Illinois, Alex. What's going on, Jeff? How you doing, buddy? Appreciate two bucks, man. You're interested in the giveaway. What's that Bass Pro? New CT? Do you know when it's changed? I do not, man. As Trey's still on, he probably knows what's changed from the new CT to the old. I do believe it's a smaller frame. But I could be wrong about that, but I do believe it's a smaller frame. Other than that, I really don't know, man. I would check a uh, spool size, check line capacity on it. What subscription box you think is best to get? I mean, I'll tell you up front, I've been with Mr. Tackle Box for about nine years now. And all I'm going to tell you is like this. Those boxes are not for everyone, okay? If you want to, if you know, put it this way, if you know what you like, uh, you like to fish the same things, you, and you know the colors you like, don't get those boxes. That is not for you. Those boxes are really to introduce you to new brands, new lures, you know, baits that you maybe you wouldn't normally buy that you can get in these boxes and you like. Okay, so if you want to try new things, get you out of your comfort zone, new techniques and all that, then these boxes are for you. But again, if you just like the same old thing, I would not get a MTB subscription or any subscription of that matter. Now, as far as comparing MTB to another brand, again, I would go with, uh, I would look at price. You know, you've never seen me get the Elite on this channel. I get the regular box, and I get the Pro box. I feel if you're going to get the Elite, if you're going to get, you know, I'm not going to name any names here like I'm ripping on another company, but if you're going to get that other box as well, I do believe they're more expensive than what like the Elite or than what the regular box and the Pro box is. So again, my take on that is if you're going to spend, you know, 30, 40 bucks on a subscription box, I mean, that's, that's a good chunk of money. You know, for me, at least, if I'm going to spend that much, I would just go shopping and get exactly what I want. You know, but I feel, you know, for the price MTB and all that, you know, you get your first box for as little as 10 bucks using code TJ81. So for 10 bucks, you know, for your first box, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a good deal again to get int introduced to new lures, like I said, new companies, new techniques. And then from there, like I said, uh, you can get a subscription right now, 15% off the plan. But if you just look 
look at the price, what you get, I think it's a good deal for the regular box and the Pro. Again, I personally wouldn't buy the more expensive boxes because I'd just rather go shopping. So it's kind of my take on the on the boxes. What's your thoughts on baits suck as poppers? What's your thoughts on baits suck as poppers? I don't know what you mean, dude. Explain, buddy. Do you mean poppers suck or what? Greg's used spider wire. Not impressed. Switch to Power Pro and love it. Okay. Fish with Alex. Appreciate it. So there's two people there that's not impressed with spider wire. Three, spider wire is horrible. Jared likes War Eagle finesse. Spinner baits have produced well for me over the years. Not very durable, though. Let's me go saltwater fishing. Do likes Lucky Charms. And uh, Seagull Red Label. See, George Boy here. Spinner baits are a must in the tackle bag. Three eighths mostly, but half ounce. Dude, that's how I look at it, too, man. Three eighths is pretty much what I throw. And if it's windy, I throw the half. That's how I look at it. I fish in Illinois. Do you have much experience with booyah spinnerbaits? They look great, but I haven't. I do. I've been throwing booyahs for years. Um, just the regular booyahs, the, um, what are they called? The, um, I said it earlier. The, uh, what's that called? Oh, what's it called now? Do I have my box in here? Can't run out the garage. Um, what's it called? What did I say earlier, guys? Help me out here. The Booyah. I cannot think of it. Something wire. Um, anyways, yes, I do have a lot of experience with Booyah. I've been throwing it for years. I cannot think of the name of that. Booyah. Uh, that's going to drive me insane. Do I have one hanging up in here? Booyah. Man, I can't think of it. Somebody help me out here. Now, the Jason Christie ones, I've been messing around with those. They don't seem to have the thump that I thought they would have. You know, the verdict's a lot on those. I just started playing around with those. But the Booyah, what is the name of that? They're like seven bucks. It's a special wire. I just said it earlier. I've heard of the six gill, but I've not tried them on. Jeff, man, I'd like to pick up that Scorpion DC, but uh, I don't know. Just buying it on Amazon, I mean, I, like that one place that had like 15 of them, there's only a few sites that actually have those reels, and one of them that had the most, I never even heard of it. It was like 7800 or something like it was like the name of the, uh, the website there or the company that sells them. I kind of just, I don't know, kind of rubbed me wrong there. I don't want to spend that much money on a reel than to be like a fake or something, you know. Have you ever fished with a Mr. Twister? Have you ever, if you haven't, I recommend a black grub, medium size jig, PBJ tail, bass catching machine. Yeah, I fished with them before. It wasn't too long ago. I picked up some of them. I think they got a lizard. Um, they got like, what, they got holes in the tails and all that. I can't really remember which ones they were. But yeah, I fished with them. That's something else. This wall back here, there's like, 10 different kind of baits behind each pack. And that's been driving me insane. So that's another project we'll be doing here real soon. So I got the same baits in each row. So I know exactly what I'm looking at. Joseph, you got that? Yeah, because the box said Grande Bass. And I thought it was Grande Bass. But the pack says Grande Fishing. It was like... Shout out to Debo. He really supports you, TJ. I like seeing that you are a good dude. He mentions you a lot and your affiliates links. Yep. Debo's a good old boy, man. I like Debo. Hopefully me and uh, Hank and Debo get together next year. Debo and Hank, some good dudes right there. Yep. Yeah. I, I much rather throw the, uh, the single over the, all the BBs, all the rattles. What do you recommend to throw in dirty water? You know, spinner baits, chatter baits, square bills. Um, 
with a mud bottom, I don't really like to disturb the bottom too much. So, you know, I'll swim a Texas rig a lot. I'll swim a jig. I try not to disturb the bottom too much because you just make it harder to see. But a lot of guys will, I believe, slow down more in dirty water where, I mean, I, I think I, I do better actually speeding up. I mean, they really can't see that well, but if you're using a bait like a spinner bait or a crank bait, I mean, they know what's coming. You know, I just feel that even the faster you move it, even in dirty water, you're still giving them less chance to think about it when it comes by them, they hit it. So I really don't slow down that much in muddy water. I do try and throw a bigger presentation once in a while, maybe a bigger soft plastic, bigger creature bait or whatever. But for the most part, I'm using mainly uh, reaction type baits, you know, baits that make noise. I don't really throw anything silent. I like rattles and all my jigs, swim jigs and all that. I'm big on scent, dye, color and all that, so... Uh, be patient with the answers to your questions, folks. There is about 30 to 40 second delay between chat and when he sees the chat. Yeah, since I try and read all the comments, yeah, I definitely get behind in uh, in um, questions here. I have not, have not used a Black Max combo, John. Thank you, 84 Neil Bone. Yeah, I'm not you. I don't even know if I've used really any of the stuff. The square bills, the the um, jack all ones. What else we got here? Flat side. Those are good. Those are Kelly J flats. And hey, we need to do a video on all these different square bills. That's something else we'll do. If I mention that in my last video, doing like a battle of the baits with square with um, top water buzz baits and frogs and all that. We'll do a square bill. Might have to have like twenty of those in that category though. That would be fun, though. That would be fun. Keep the baits coming. Love seeing all the different colorways. For sure, dude. Do I like night fishing? I don't do it a ton. But yeah, I like it, though. I know the lake that I fish at night, at least on the east side, would be kind of dangerous. There's a whole lot of stumps over there. I mean, I know the lake really well, so I think I'd be all right. But that's really where I'd want to fish during the night and like i said it could be pretty dangerous over there no problem alan gotta keep it real with you guys what shimano reel did you have on your desk the other day in the video i had uh titanium and a corrado 200 and then i had spinny reels i had the uh the uh, stratic fl and the altegra When you throw a 3 8 chatterbait over a half, and just kind of to be honest, just like with the spinner baits, I mean, I mainly throw a 3 8 but if we have some wind, um, then I go with the half just because it's easier to throw. But for the most part, I fish pretty shallow. I mean, I'll throw that, that chatterbait or that spinnerbait up on the bank and then work it off from there. So for the most part, since I'm fishing shallow, I do like a 3 8 So if you try and throw a heavier one and you're going to slow roll it, then you'll end up being too deep, depending on the depth that you're trying to reach. But for me... Like I said, I mainly throw three eighths and a half in the wind. Now, I don't know anything about the Enigma, Enigma rods. Didn't, uh, I thought I seen, did uh, Aaron Martins, did he leave that company now? No, not the Covert. Those are the Jason Christie ones. It's the Booyah. I, I said it earlier in the stream. I still can't believe it. I can't think of it. It's the Booyah. I don't have one hanging up in here. Booyah. It's not Invisiwire. That's Picasso. It's the Booyah. That's going to drive me insane. No, it's not the Covert, though. And Vizwire just called, you know, I need to get that box. Give me one second. Give me, hold on. I'm back. I don't know which one it's in. All right. 
I know I got it in here. Hold on. Okay, this is the... This ain't the spare. Where's my other box at? Where's the other pair it is? We have lots of spinner baits. I don't know where they're all at. Okay. These are... These are the Picasso. Let me get let me get a light one here. That's the Picasso and Viz wire. It's kind of like a brown, like heat treated type wire. But if you compare it to like, oh, what's this one here? Let me compare it to like here's. Let me compare it to this one. This is the uh, the accent. I'm not sure that's even going to show up with all that well on this phone here. You can kind of tell. Yeah, like this one here, it's, it's a much lighter wire. And with that light wire, you just get a ton of vibration out of it. But yeah, I believe it's called Invis, Invis wire from Picasso there. But that, let's see, that Booyah one, why should not even be in here? Um, oh my gosh, what a disaster. All right, that's another Invisiwire. Here's a Booyah there. That's not it though. Here's another Booyah. Gold is one of my go-to colors. The whole lot of gold in here. Another gold, another gold, another Booyah gold. Uh, why am I not seeing it in here? That's one of the coverts right there. Booyah Covert. Where is... Dang it, it's not in here. Somebody look that up. <laughs> I can't look it up on my phone. It's a Booyah and Golden Shiner. Is it a color of it? I just seen it the other day. This is crazy. Where is it at? Hanging up. Oh, wait, it's right here. It was there the whole time. This is it. This is it here. Is there, there probably ain't even a name on it. Of course, there's not a name on it. But this is this this is the Booyah spinner mate that I was talking about. This one right here. Okay. I don't know if you guys can tell from that which one it is. But this one right here is one of my favorite from Booyah. And here, I can't even think of the name. Booyah Vibraflex. I got it. Booyah Vibraflex. That's it right there. That's a fantastic one there from Booyah. Finally. All right. What do, what do you hook? What do you hook you prefer to use? Okay, Fishing Kid, EWG or regular offset? Okay. Let me just grab them, make it easier. Okay. I think we talked about this in one of my last videos. Okay, now this particular round bend offset is a little bit different from others. This is a must add here. Grip pin, big bias off plastic hook. Okay, two times long, all right? This particular round bend offset, okay, it's got a wider gap here, bigger gap, longer shank and neck compared to your standard round bend offset. If you look just at the standard must add or gamagatsu or whatever, this one here has got a bigger gap to it, like I said, longer shank, longer neck. So this particular hook here, you can use with somewhat fatter baits, okay? You need an EWG with a fatter bait because you need the gap. You gotta have somewhere for that plastic to go. When the fish bites it, the plastic has to compress down. It has to have somewhere to go. So you need a bait, or a hook, I should say, that's got a big enough gap for those fatter baits, all right? So let's take this one out here. Okay, you'll see here that an EWG has a much bigger gap on it. Okay, from the hook point down here, okay, much bigger gap compared to a round bin offset. Especially if you look at a standard round bin offset, not this particular one here, because this one has more gap than others. So this hook here is going to give you a much better hookup just because the hook point is not in line with the eye. 
So if you have it rigged up with a worm or whatever, a fish bites it, okay, the hook point's open, okay? There's nothing in the way. Much better hookup with this hook. EWG, it's in line. So you only have this much distance right here for the fish's lip to drop down in there and get hooked, okay? But in some cases, you have to use this type of hook just because the bait is fatter. Like a tube or a thick creature bait swim bait, you need the extra wide gap because you have to have the gap for the plastic to get out of the way. Okay, so use this type of hook when you can get away with it, but on thicker baits, you have to use EWG. But again, the hookup ratio is just not that great with this hook. With my experience with these hooks, you know, you see everyone, you know, crack them whenever they're using a Texas rig or whatever. I feel you miss more fish with an EWG when you set the hook on them hard. I feel more of a pull hook set, you'll hook up better with an EWG. So that's kind of my take on that. Thinner baits, you know, you go with the round bin offset. Thicker baits, you have to go with the extra wide gap. His favorites are War Eagle, the Stray, or Strike King, Razor, R Blades. Favorite all around jig. Dude, that Trash Master jig, man, that thing is the deal. I still use New Tech to this day. Um, I like the new tech jigs. I do have a discount code for them as well down in the description. But uh, if I had to pick one, one type of jig, I love swimming a jig, dude. So for me, it's going to be a swim jig. <clears throat> Anybody try that bent minnow lure OSP bent minnow? I have not, buddy. Bad experience with eagle claw hooks. Just picked up some fritz sides. I, I ordered some of those as well for uh, for um, Black Friday. Yoda worm. Yes, I do have some videos with the Yoda worm. I have not tried the uh, the clickbait yet. Yoda worm, love it, man. It's awesome on a shaky head, Texas rigged, a chatterbait trailer. It's awesome as a chatterbait trailer. The dirtier the water and the faster the retrieve is, the longer the trailer hook is behind the bait. Best to just slow down, retrieve. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna disagree with you, but for me, I hardly ever use trailer hooks, and um, I just, I just have better luck reeling them faster. I totally get it, though. Most people would fish slower in muddy water, and I feel that is the case with a soft plastic, shaky head, something like that. But it's my personal experience fishing muddy water. I've had better luck moving faster with the reaction type baits. Well, whatever works for you, dude. Um, I do not I do not have a tattoo of spinning reel. Do not, buddy. Have you tried an OG flat side? I've tried flat sides. I'm not sure the OG. Are you talking about the uh, the Oz Garage one? If you're talking about those, I got them on order. I ordered those for Black Friday as well. If you're just talking about flat sides. Yeah, I use flat sides all the time. But as far as um, the new one, not the Oz Garage one, yeah, I got a few of those on order. North Florida, what's up, buddy? What's going on, Simon? Oh, he's with G. Loomis now? That's cool, dude. Hey, he was always using, what, Shimano, wasn't he? Let's see here. He's in North Florida. I used to live in and fish with Swanee River. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's shaddy. Where's that bait at? This ain't it. Where's it at? Where'd I go? Is it still in here? Not that one. Oh, here it is. That's right. Remember, you guys remember watching that video? That catfish mangled it. But yeah. It was funny. When I made that video, yeah, the triple shaddy, when I made that video, I took it all out. But I was doing a bunch of like, it went in things in there because of, you know, because of, I was calling it shady, you know, triple shady. I took all the M&Ms out of there. But even then, I still thought that was the name of it, the, the triple shady. But here, of course, it's triple shady. That's kind of funny, though. It would have been funny if I left all that stuff in there. Night fishing on a full moon, the best time, because you could actually see pretty good for sure. 
Alan's looking for a durable bait caster. Any suggestions? I mean, it would depend on your price range, bud. But I tell you what, um, SLX, SLS XT, um, Daiwa Tatula CT, uh, Pro Qualifier. That's going on sale right now. I believe a Bass Pro for like seventy bucks. Those are all um, good choices. Suffix has an affordable braid that works good. Prefer SmackDown, but Suffix braid will save you a few bucks. So you talking about A32? I tried A32 years ago. I didn't really care for that one. I'm sure they have other ones than that one, but I didn't care for A32. The Wyoming Ice Hole. What's going on, man? We've got 100 people still on here after an hour and 20 minutes. That's awesome. If you guys have not hit the thumbs up, please do so. Really do appreciate that. What's going on, Simon? Holy cow. Nate Compton, a.k.a. the kid that donates. Man, I truly appreciate that, dude. 100 bucks. You did not have to do that. Hey, man, have you ever been fishing in North Cal? If so, where? I have not, buddy. I have not. Wish I have, but I have not. And I truly do appreciate that donation, man. You did not have to do that. And you're definitely entered in the giveaway. <clears throat> Alan. No problem, buddy. We'll go over the giveaway one more time for tonight. Hey, dude, I really appreciate that, buddy. I have to buy a new reel. Do another review. All right. Giveaway tonight. Rapid Fishing Line Guides. Okay, two packs of those. We have two Trash Master Jigs. Okay. And then five packs of the Grande Bass. We have the Spicy Craw. We have the Trophy Hunter. That's the Crush Craw. Force Crush Craw and Spicy Craw. Trophy Hunter, and then we have the 6.5 Airtail Wiggler, and we got the 6-inch Salty Dog, and then the 5-inch Trophy Stick. That's tonight's giveaway. First ever high school bass tournament this weekend. Any tips? Man, make as many casts as you can, dude. The more that your lure's in the water, better chance to catch a fish. Stay safe, man. Here's some money to take a trip down North Cal. I appreciate it, buddy. That's awesome, dude. I really do appreciate that. Tell you what, man. We, we'll get this YouTube thing to become full-time, dude. I got plans to travel. I'd like to meet a ton of you guys. That would be awesome. But that'll definitely help, man. That's definitely the biggest donation I've ever got. That's, that's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, James. Yeah, it's, it's easy, very easy to fish way too fast, dude. I'm sure there's plenty of times that I fish way too fast. I mean, there's there's fishing fast, and then there's way too fast. And there's a lot of times I'm sure I'm fishing way too fast, but I still prefer those reaction baits faster than, than slower, you know? Really work in area and remember multiple casts and angles. Yeah, angles, dude. Angles is a big thing, man. Anytime I'm hitting a point, I hit it from one side, I'll definitely hit it from the other. And I've caught many fish doing that, catching them on the back side. Yeah, angles, man, is everything, dude. I love how organized you are, Tackle Junkie. I would be digging through boxes and stuttering to do what you just did. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, I'm not nearly organized as I used to be, but after this next couple months, dude, I'll, I think I really will be organized like I used to be, you know, years ago, but, uh, I'm just, the older I get, it seems like I'm, I keep getting involved with the more things and you got kids and all that work, it's just like I'm, I'm running out of time. So I don't have the time that I used to have to keep everything organized. I mean, for the most part, it looks organized, but for me, it's not really how I would like it, but it will be though. Now, it wasn't the Counter-Strike. We just we just realized what it was. What did I say it was? The Booyah Vibraflex. This one here will be my favorite one from Booyah. Fishing with Dooley, man. Another shout-out for you, man. Tech boys. Dude, don't. Fishing with Dooley, I gave you one, man. Don't put in, like, 100 comments in here.
Joseph, I disagree with that, TJ. Only use EW hooks. Only I only use EW hooks, and I can get not, and I cannot say that I miss many fish. I mean, that's that's cool, dude. As to me personally, though, with e, with EWG as far as hook setting, I'm saying I've just done better with a pull versus a hook set. Hey, whatever works for you, man. Uh, Nate, I'm sure I'm way behind the comments, dude, but I just seen it, buddy. I did, man. What's going on, Michael? Nice, man. I spent most of my life up to 98 when I joined the Navy, and, and I got you, dude. I got you. I've never used G, G Loomis rods, buddy. Like I not say, man. And the air tails, they actually have a little hole in the back of the tail there. But I don't know if this will be picked up here on the phone. But um, there's a little hole in there, which you might be able to see. There you go. You can see it now. And, and uh, you can put rattles in there, which is pretty cool. But I imagine they float up as well. But uh, anybody, if anybody ever used these, if you put the rattle in there, will they float up? I'd imagine, yeah, they're going to float. But it's cool that you can put a rattle in there, though. And the only ones I used from them in the past were the... Let's see here. Where's that at? The, uh, the Mega Claws. That's the only one that I've used from them in the past. I haven't used any of their uh, the Urtail stuff. No, no, no. I've seen that donation now. What's going on here? You guys trying to get me to Branson tonight? I don't know. My phone's about dead. Hey, babe. I need a charger fast. Hey, Becca. Hey, Vinny. I need a charger real fast. We are on 5%. Give me give me one second, guys. We're on 5%. My phone's about dead. Hey, Vinny. Hey, babe. I need that 10-foot charger. I need it like yesterday. Hold on, guys. Hey, Vin. See if this reaches over here. Now what I gotta do though, I gotta unplug the mic. We're back. You guys still there? You guys still there? Where are we at? Okay, hopefully you guys are still on here. Normally we're off in an hour. It's an hour and a half. My phone died. I plugged it in. It said 1%. And then it died. <laughs> so we're back. I do apologize about that. Trying to get back up to where we were. And guys, I do apologize. Hope everyone gets back on here. It's not letting me go. It's only letting me go to the comment where it says uh, show the air tail. Can you guys hear me too? I need to make sure you guys can hear me because the mic's not plugged in. Everyone good? Can you guys hear me? 
I'll go back up. Let me know if you can hear me. We're good. Okay. So I had unplugged the mic to plug the phone in. Okay, we'll go back to where we can go. The furthest I can go back is show the air tail again, please. All right, here's the air tail again. Right. Right there. And they come with little rattles. They sent me one little pack here. The rattles that you can put there in the air tail. So pretty cool. Guys, again, I do apologize about that. The phone said 5% battery life. So I plugged it in, said 1%, and then it died. Okay. Could you show the first thing that you're going to give? Okay, the giveaway tonight, rapid line guides. I got videos on these. You just run your line through a clip there. It looks like a little drop shot weight. And then you can actually grab this part here to thread the line through your guides. Okay, and they got a little bit of weight on them as well. If you were to drop it as you're threading the line through, the line's not going to run back through the guides. We have the line guides here. And then we had two Trash Master jigs. Two Trash Master jigs. And then five packs of the Grande, uh, Grande Bass. Okay. Fishing Kid, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Nice, good old Moody. I practically live at Grand Bay and Banks Lake over in Lanier Country. A lot of bass fish. Over on the banks, the lake's actually a good little fishing hole. That's cool, man. Parker, love your videos. Have a lot of lot. Guys, say what I try and keep videos rolling every Wednesday, Sunday, and then live streams on Thursday. So the schedule's been off just a little bit. Hopefully, I'll get a video made uh, for Sunday. But I got to work tomorrow. Got to work Saturday. Got to work Sunday. So hopefully, I can find some time to get a video out for you guys Sunday. If not, we'll have one again on Wednesday, and then we'll be streaming again on Thursday. We'll just try and keep it rolling. You like the 832? It's just a fan casting and being diligent in cadence and retrieve methods. He shut the door, dude. My son's over there playing video games. I guess I was being too loud. He had to come and shut the door. Nate, again, dude, man, you need to stop doing this, man. <laughs> Another $100. Nate Compton, a.k.a. the kid that donates. I never have seen someone so dedicated to answering questions for the fans. You are truly the man. I just started watching you today, but you have made my day 10 times better. Now you have a good day, man, I, and hopefully I win the giveaway. I tell you what, dude, I don't know if you're going to win the giveaway or not, but message me on Instagram or Facebook or my email and I'll send you a little package, dude. I mean, that's crazy, man. I do truly appreciate it, though. That is crazy. I have not used the ALX rods. I have not. Without a doubt, my favorite bait is the square bill. Oh, I tell you what, guys. Tell you what. Speaking of square bills, I've been talking with LureNet. Do you guys remember... Um, a while back, the color Tennessee Shad being discontinued. I did a video on that. We talked about it. Everyone's all bummed about that color. All I can say is it might be coming back. If it comes back, I'll be doing a video letting you guys know that I've been talking with them, and maybe it's coming back. Maybe. Maybe. Just wondering if you are anti-lose reels or did I miss something? You never seem to mention that. John, dude, I, I've been using lose reels for a while, man. I've done a review on the lose Pro TI. I've done a review on the BB1 Pro. I've done a review on the Custom. I've done a review on the Custom Pro. I use them all the time in videos. My frog reel, swim jig reel is the Pro TI. I mean, I'm using that all the time. Yeah, I love lose reels, no doubt. Hey, Eater, why, why, are you, why are you putting the same comment in like 35 times?
Hey, but that dude keeps spamming the comments. Um, get him out of here, please. Michael, yes, I always do my lives on a phone. Our internet here is not that great. And I've only done a few on my computer with, um, what do you call the video camera or whatever what do you call that? Um, I don't know. My son took it from me. I don't even have it anymore. But I've only done a few on the computer. But our internet is so, like, shoddy here that the quality was really crappy. So I stopped doing it on the computer. I mean, years ago. I've not done one on the computer in a long time. I just mainly do them on my phone. Um, hey, we got comments. That dude is still spamming us. These comments, yeah, get him out of here, please. K4K jigs and wacky rigs will work great. They're fishing around the Cypress really hard to stay in the channels there. And if you're brave enough to fish from the bank, watch for the gators. Am I that far behind? I'm just now seeing where my wife said I got technical difficulties. Hank, no scale, now the phone dies. Tell you what, with the donation, I'll buy two more scales, okay? Then I'll never forget my scale again. No problem, I'll just pick out baits from your wall. I've had some scary... Our hair calls out there and boats too, though. Definitely a dangerous place to fish. Caught tons of baby gators out there and snagged a few big ones. Yeah, dude, I don't want to mess around with no gators, dude. Sorry, guys, I'm behind on comments here. I'm just seeing now where you're saying I'm back. Yeah, Tom, dude, I plugged it in with 1%, man, and it was done. All is good. Battery, yep, battery died. Loud and clear. Where are we at here? Get back to the charger. That's mm -hmm. great. I've just seen your uh, comment coming there, buddy. I'll get back to you as soon as we're done with the stream here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've not used the, um, the Alex Rods, bud. Miss Junkie needs to be moderating again. I think, she, hopefully, she removed that dude. But she's trying to work up there right now. She had to work all day, and now she's working all night. So she told me she would be moderating uh, off and on. So I'm assuming she missed that dude. But hopefully, she got him out of here. And I hate kicking people out of the chat. But, I mean, there's no reason to keep doing that. You know, I, since I go through each comment, then that just makes the other comments that much further down there. So. I'm getting it on the 19th, so hopefully I like it. I'm pairing up with the crowd of DC. There you go, dude. I like that DC, man. Dave, appreciate five bucks, buddy. You're in the giveaway. What squirrel do I like? I tell you what, the Bomber Square is one of my favorites. It's probably one of the cheaper squirrels that you can get, but I've caught like all my big fish on that Bomber Square A. KVD 1.5, that would be my favorite two. Probably square bills on there, and they're really budget friendly. I mean, you can get the KVD 1.5, usually on sale for like four something. Like I said, the Bomber Squares, those are four bucks retail. You can get them on sale as well. But I mean, I use a ton of different square bills, like I was showing you guys earlier. But um, those are the ones that I use on the daily. I mean, I break off a lot of crankbaits as well. I mean, I, I throw square bills where you really shouldn't throw square bills, and I end up losing a lot of them. But, um, um, and I'm losing a lot of them, but uh, those really don't hurt too bad when you break them off, you know. Most of my hard baits come from the clearance bin in Wally World. Uh, don't allow for huge budgeting. And yeah, I hear that, dude. I hear you, man. Plus, if you're fishing around gators, too. I imagine you go through some baits. What is the best bait caster to go catfishing? Um, 
Catfish, I mean, depending on how big a fish you're targeting, you may want much bigger lines. So I would say you're going to want uh, definitely look at line capacity. So I'd say probably most guys might even use, I mean, I don't know for sure. I think a lot of guys use big spinning reels for the most part for catfish. But uh, you may want to use maybe one of the bigger round type reels just because they have a lot of line capacity. But I do believe, um, you know, my work trucks, so they're parked down there by the river. And I always see a lot of guys coming in there when I'm fueling up. And um, you always see all their catfish rods in their boat. And I say majority of them are just big spinning reels. So you may want to go that route as well. I just noticed you seem to not recommend them is the only reason I asked. Love my lose reels for sure. Definitely. Um, no, oh, I, I got you. Yeah, I didn't know you didn't mean anything by it. I, I guess it just really depends. Um you know, what you're asking as far as if you're looking for a higher end reel, if you're wanting an entry level reel. And I know the reel that people recommend the most for an entry level is like the LFS. So I think it's their hundred dollar reel. I personally haven't used that one. So I don't want to recommend a reel that I haven't used, but uh, I mean, you know, I haven't used it, but if I would just compare that one to the, the Daiwa Tattoo CT, I mean, that T-Wing system, especially with that braking system, I mean, it's really tough to backlash if you really tune it in or dial it in. So I'd imagine that the tattoo is probably better than the LFS. Again, I don't know without using the LFS. I'd just be kind of like a hunch there. But um, I'm sure that LFS is a great reel. I mean, I've heard a lot of guys brag on it. I just only really recommend the reels um, that I've used, you know. Duke, I mean, I hope I'm not done fishing for the year. I doubt I'll take the boat out anymore. It's because the main lakes that I fish are pretty stained and muddy. Now, with it being colder, I mean, they are going to clear up um, a bit. So they won't be as muddy and stained up, you know. But um, I'd say really just the way I work during the winter and all that, it's just easier for me just to hit the ponds whenever I have some free time. So I'm probably done with a boat this year. And like I said, we'll just finish out the year at the farm ponds. But I'd imagine that we, we have to be probably, you know, low mid-40s right now, water temps. The chat has a huge delay. Sorry about that, buddy. What's the biggest catfish you ever caught? Um, I think 11 pounds. All right, Nate. Yeah, hit me up on Instagram, dude. Okay, 4K, you can block people on. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, like I said, normally my wife gets on here and she does that, but I'm assuming she's still working. Janice, you're a younger YouTuber. All right, Tom. As soon as we get caught up with comments here, I'll probably call it a night as well. Try and get to them here. Use Zepco 33 and a Shakespeare microspin for my finesse stuff. Have some larger spinning gear, but not a big catfish guy. Well, looks like we are caught up. Any plans yet for next year? Challenges, reviews, new toys. We will have, hopefully, a new watercraft coming to the channel just for the ponds. You know, I won't be taking it to the main lakes. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. I'm going to trick that out for sure. Um, I mentioned in my last video, the reason I get so many different, especially when I started, I guess, recently doing it, getting so many different frogs and buzz baits. And, I mean, I'm always getting different square bills. You guys know that, but... Um, spinner baits and whatever. I like to do like the battle of the baits, you know. So if we get, and and I, probably what I'll do is I'll do a stream maybe for each style of bait. So what we'll do is like, you know, spinner baits. The stream will be about spinner baits, and we'll all figure out like our top ten. If I don't have them all, I'll go buy the ones that I don't have, and then we'll just make videos on all ten. It might be all in one day, it might be different days, and we'll just try and figure out. What is the top spinner bait and why? What's the best frog and why or whatever? So we're going to do something with that. It's kind of battle of the baits next year. That's kind of my plan. So we have that to look forward to, of course, a bunch of new reel reviews. And then, uh, like I said, hopefully a new watercraft coming to the channel. Oh, I got you, K4K. Blocks them from you. Okay. That would make more sense. 
Lose Tournament MP is the nicest reel I've used in the $150 range. See, I mean, that's I guess that's where the difference would be. Like, if I'm thinking $150 range, I mean, I'm thinking Tattoola 100. I think that one's like a 160-ish, maybe 159. But that Tattoola 100, dude, it's a nice reel, man. Now, again, I haven't used the one you're talking about either. It could be just as nice. But I guess that's what it is when I recommend a reel. The Dios is the first one that's going to come to my mind. I guess depending on the price range. I mean, I've used a ton of different Daiwas, all different price ranges. The Akumas that I use, they're 200 to 220 so not too much comes up in that price range. But like I said, I've used a, a bunch of different in the Daiwa price range. Now I've been using a handful of Shimano's in those different price ranges. Like I said, the Luz, the cheapest one I've used for the Luz, I believe is the, um, the Custom. I think that was around 180 so usually when I recommend stuff, a lot of it's to beginners. You know, I try and stay around that $100 price point. So I probably need to, need to pick up that LFS just to try it out. That'd be another reel that I can recommend to you guys. Fishing kid, go to bay for deep water. I'm not much of a deep water person. I mean, fish in the water clarity that I fish. I, um, you know, if I fish six or eight foot, that's deep. You know, but again, since it's muddy water, you know, it's, there's not much visibility down there. And really, I don't believe there's a whole lot of fish at that depth either just because of the... Um, hold on, let me turn off the air. Not the air, the heat. And I'm turning the heat off. Normally, I don't stream for two hours, so I forgot about the heat, forgot about my phone dying. I do apologize. But yeah, I don't really fish deep. Like I said, six to eight feet is pretty is deep for me. Um, and again, I don't really believe there's fish that deep, really, especially in like the summertime and all that, on the lakes that I fish, just because of the water clarity. I mean, the lake that I fish the most is 26 foot max depth. But when you're talking muddy water and you got like, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 inches of visibility at most, I mean, when you get down three, four, five, six feet, I mean, it's it's black. So, you know, I don't really feel fish are that deep on those lakes. So the deepest I fish, yeah, six, eight foot. And even then when I'm fishing that deep, I might be targeting a brush pile. Like I've caught fish at 13 foot, 17 foot on that lake, but I'm targeting brush that's in 17 foot, but it's actually only a few feet, you know, below the surface, the top of the brush. So <clears throat> yeah, I don't really fish all that deep. What species of fish? Okay, hold on. I mean, yeah, the plan is to move. I mean, if this channel ever takes off, the plan mm -hmm. is to... If, the, if this channel ever takes off, the plan is to move to Table Rock just because, like I said, you know, I don't feel I can go full-time where I'm at right now. Just the... I don't have uh, the lakes around me to do that. And uh, like I said, I just feel like it just do it better down there at Table Rock. But I mean, I really wanted to take off here before I, you know, I take the leap of faith and, and move down there. I would like it to, to be, you know, I like to, I like my numbers up here before I move. I don't want to take the chance to say, hey, I'm going to quit my job and go down there and hope it works out. I want it to work out here before I go down there and just harder to get it, get it done here with the lakes that are around me. I mean, I've always said that the lakes you fish will make or break your channel. If you're on good water, constantly catching great fish, I mean, you're probably going to get more views than the guy that's fishing, you know, not as good lakes because he's not catching near the fish and all that. I mean, it's hard for me to like even uh, run patterns and things like that on lakes that I fish because, I mean, you may fish that lake all day and catch, and catch uh, you know, four fish, three, four fish. I mean, it's just hard to even pattern those lakes because of how they the bite is there, so... Anyways, what I'm getting at is I don't fish lakes here, so it's going to take me much longer to get down there compared to if I was already down there, I believe. Now, there's other things you can do. I mean, those spillway videos do fantastic. There's a guy that lives 10 minutes from me, 620 Fishing. That's dang near all he does, and his channel blew up. But I don't really believe that's what you guys want to see, and that's not really the videos I want to make. So I'm just trying to stay true to myself, make the videos I want to make, make what I think you want to make, not what's going to get me down there faster. So I just feel if I just make whatever just to get me down there, those subs aren't going to stick with me. So I just need to make the videos that I know we both want to see and what I, and I want to do. 
And that way, when I finally get to where I know I can move down there, I feel the following that I have will stick with me. So I'm just trying to keep it real. And if I get down there, I get down there. If it never works out, you know, and I guess I guess it wasn't meant to be. I mean, that is my dream. And I don't think it's really asking a whole lot. I mean, I'm only wanting to move four hours from where I'm at. But the thing would be I'd have to quit my job. And again, I mean, I've even been talking with my wife about that. I mean, you know, hell, I'd, I'd love to go manage a Bass Pro. I mean, if there's an opening down there for me to do that, I may quit my job tomorrow. I mean, that's that's really why I would really enjoy doing something like that. And I feel being down in Branson, especially at that Bass Pro down there in Springfield. I mean, there's so much that goes on down there that I just feel like it really blow my channel up down there. So, I mean, it's something else that we've been kicking around. If I could find a good job down there, then I would quit, move down there. And that, I'd be working that job. And then if YouTube ever took off down there, then I would do it full time down there when it took off. I'm just trying to think of ways to get me down there sooner. So, I mean, I don't know. Ed, um, no, I'm not talking kayak, dude. Yeah, no doubt, Michael. It's still growing, dude. Yeah, we're growing steady, dude. No doubt. It's just not growing as fast as I would like it to grow to get me down there. But yeah, we're definitely, we're, we're definitely still growing, man. I'm taking boat out one more time this weekend up here in Michigan. Picked up another 13 Concept Z. Yep, dude, 90 bucks. I seen that. I was tempted to buy another one myself. I really was. And a 50 pound catfish took your rod in the water. Give me tips to catch bottom toes. I don't even know what that is, dude. Spent 35 bucks on tackle today. Very cool. North Fork, dude, you are way behind, dude. We were talking so much smack on you earlier, man. Good thing you weren't on here. Northern Fishing Channel seemed to have fish for muskies, pike, walleye. Yeah, I hear that. I hope so, too, dude. I hope so, too, man. You can fit my Bass Pro in the fishing department in Springfield, yeah. Yep. Brian, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're attending the giveaway. We'll go over the giveaway one more time. We'll get caught up on comments. We'll pick a winner, and then we'll call it a night here. The giveaway tonight, rapid fishing line guides, both sizes. And then we have two of the Trash Master jigs. And then we have five packs of Grande Bass. These here are the Airtail Wiggler. These are the uh, Crush Craw. Two packs of those. And then we got the lizard and the uh, the trophy stick. That's tonight's giveaway. We'll let that run just a couple more minutes, and then we'll go ahead and pick a winner, and we'll get out of here. I just converted my channel from sports cards to fishing and gold prospecting. Not going to grow while I'm paddling my uncle's V-Hall, though. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool, though, man. I tell you what, gold, um, you probably watch uh, Gold Rush. That's one of my favorite shows. Hope all's well, dude. North Fork. I usually do a collab video with Debo. Yeah, myself, Debo, and Bass Geek. That is the plan. Hopefully, uh, next year, well, all three of us can get together and do a video. I feel like this is kind of your calling, man. This is what you're meant to do, working on YouTube and the bass fishing industry. Dude, that's what I want to do, man. I even told my wife, if the YouTube thing doesn't work out... You know, I want to do something with fishing. I mean, one of the reasons I got in YouTube was just because of my work schedule years ago was terrible. I mean, there was no way really for me to fish tournaments or really do anything in fishing other than YouTube. It's kind of why I started it. But yeah, I mean, it's where I want to be. I'm comfortable. I mean, I love talking to you guys and just talking fishing and all that. I, I want to do something fishing related. And I, I would have thought YouTube would have done it already. I mean, some guys... Three, four years already full-time. But I guess it depends on the content you're making and, and all that. Like, so we've already talked about that. I don't want to make anything that you guys don't want to see. I'm not going to go do Walmart challenges and and spillway fishing and all that. I mean, I'm going to make what I want to make, what you guys want to see. So it's going to take me much longer compared to the next guy. But if it's meant to be, it'll happen. If not, I may end up managing Bass Pro or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, Joseph, I got you, D. Grande fishing. I got you, man. Wildcat, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a lot of drama on that show. And they got a new guy on there now. He does not all that entertaining. So basically, you're watching Parker, then you're talk, watching Tony Beats, and he's not even doing a whole lot right now. And then, um, What's the other guy that left Parker? He's not really all that entertaining either. Yeah, yeah. yeah Tony Beats. Wildcat, love the channel and content, TJ. Keep grinding, my friend. We'll do, buddy. Appreciate you, man. All right, babe. We are caught up with comments. Nobody else donate. Babe, pick us a winner for tonight. We've been on here about two hours, guys. Again, I do apologize earlier for the phone dying. I didn't expect it to be on that long. Phone died, but we are back, so. Ed, you'll make it. Don't be discouraged. 2020 has been a setback for a lot of good channels and other small businesses. I hear that, dude, but to be honest, man, uh, most guys that I talk to with YouTube, this has been one of their better years just because, I guess, with everyone out of work and all that, I mean, People weren't really doing anything. More people were fishing. More people were watching the videos, learning how to fish. A lot of fishing channels that I've talked to actually did really well this year. And like I said, this summer really was probably the best my channel ever did. And that's when I was thinking, all right, we're going to Branson. But like I said, right now, I'm about a quarter of what I was in the summertime, which that's normal. Views always drop off in the wintertime. But I just needed to be consistent all year before I pull that trigger, you know. We'll make it happen one way or the other. I mean, it would be cool. I mean, I think it'd be cool to work at a Bass Pro or something like that, you know, and then still do YouTube on the side. Imagine all the videos I could make if I worked at Bass Pro. I mean, I think it would be cool. I think it would open up more doors, you know. Scott has watched more YouTube than live TV due to politics. No kidding, dude. Yeah, I'm not much in politics either. But, yeah. We'll see. I mean, like I said, a lot of people now I know have got in, got into hunting you know, with the time of year and all that. So we'll just see when spring rolls back around. If the numbers bump back up, we'll just see where it goes, you know. Hey, Ben. Hey, Ben, you out there, dude? I want to make sure my wife's on here. We're waiting for her to pick the winner of the giveaway. Hey, Benny. Ben. Hey, are you on here? We all could be waiting around for nothing. You're not even on. I know she's up there working. Hold on. Hey, Benny. Ben. Go make sure mommy's on the computer. Tell them we need to pick a winner. And what we do is just so you guys know how we pick a winner. If I worked at Bass Pro, I would spend my whole paycheck on gear. No kidding, man. I'd be owing them at the end. How we pick a winner, though, let's say 10 people donate. She'll just do a random number generator, 1 through 10, whatever number is picked. Then we just count up. If it's 5, we count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Number 5 is the winner. So that's how we pick the winner for these giveaways. I can hear my son right now calling my wife, so hopefully he's telling her. She may have went to bed. I was up early this morning. I had to go. Um, the job I was doing today, I was helping my buddy deliver uh, FedEx packages. Today's supposed to be my day off. I got to go help him again tomorrow, and then I'm back to washing trucks Friday or Saturday and Sunday. And congratulations, Brian Raker. You're tonight's Super Chat winner. Please message me on Facebook, Instagram, or email in the description, your shipping info, and I'll get right out to you. All right, dude. Be cool if he was still on here. Yeah, there's no way for me to reach out to you guys. So if he's not on here, um, what we'll do is we'll leave a comment. We'll pin a comment once the video is processed, and hopefully he checks back. Yeah, there's no way for me to reach out to you guys, though. Oh, he is. Cool. There he is. There he is. All right, Brian. Yeah, reach out to me, dude, on Instagram, Facebook. Email, and we'll get that shipped out to you tomorrow, buddy. By the way, or by me, the summer was too hot for fishing, but this fall was out every weekend. That's cool, dude. 
Very cool, man. All right, guys. We're coming up on, in four seconds, we're coming up on two hours. That was a fantastic chat. Again, I do apologize for my phone dying. I'll make sure I have a cable handy next time. I thought I had more time. It said 5%. Time I got the cable, she was dead. So anyways, hopefully you guys all came back that was watching during, uh, before we, uh, we killed the battery there, but I think we're good to go here now. Anyways, I'll try to get a video out to you guys on Sunday. If not, I'll definitely have one out on Wednesday, and we'll be streaming again next Thursday. Hope you guys had an awesome night. It was fun chatting with you guys. Smash the thumbs up. We'll see you guys on the next one.